there everyone i hope you're all doing well today once again i'm coming back at you with another cooking video i know they're not my best performing videos but they're what make me happy and that's what matters right now so i thought i'd share another with you and this time a little prosperity spell as well prosperity spells can be done in any number of ways though the success of a prosperity spell and well really any spell that is relies heavily on your mindset going into it. It's absolutely crucial that your will in no way hinders the spell's ability to succeed. Unfortunately, this does happen quite a bit, especially when it comes to spells revolving around prosperity. In order for a spell to succeed, you must go into it believing wholeheartedly that it will be successful and that you deserve what you desire. If you continuously doubt its ability to pull through or think in a negative manner, then all you'll be doing is sending out energy that counters the spell. So my biggest tip for all of you before we get started is to go into this with a strong belief in yourself and what you're wishing to manifest. This is the most important piece of spell work. It's not the tools or herbs or reciting a poem. Those are all just extra little things to help focus and enhance energy. They're not the main source. The power and will that you will bring to the table, that's what gets things done. So, even though I have specific herbal correspondences I've focused in on in this video, What's really crucial is the energy you bring to the table. This also means that you're free to switch up the ingredients used as the spell will still manifest given the proper mindset. So use what you have, stay indoors, social isolation is key. Alrighty. In today's video, I will be sharing with you my blackberry thumbprint cookies, so I'll be focusing in a lot on blackberries. Which aren't really in season right now, so I had to use my frozen ones left over from last summer. And though seasonal cooking is really important to me, we're still in quarantine and we're working with what we have here. Besides, who doesn't love a little jam-filled thumbprint cookie? They're incredibly simple to make, and I'm hoping a lot of you have all the ingredients. Now, first off, before I get into the whole cooking spiel, let's talk a little bit about blackberries. A blackberry plant has many uses from the vines, thorns, leaves, and the berry itself. Today, of course, we're focusing in with the blackberry, which has prosperity and abundance properties, especially prosperity when working with cooking, which we are today. Though blackberry vines can be woven into wonderful protective wreaths, as the thorns have powerful protective properties. Speaking of which, the thorns are actually wonderful little additions to protection spell bags and such. Now, I made my own jam, and I kind of took a wintry flavored spin on it, I think maybe a little bit because I'm stuck indoors and it doesn't quite feel like spring yet, so sorry if you try this and it tastes like winter time, that was not necessarily the goal, but hey, coziness is not a bad thing. So let's get started with the ingredients you'll need. There are two portions to this recipe if you so choose, the jam and the cookie. Now, of course, if you are making this without the spell, you just want to make jam cookies, you don't have to use homemade jam. Just using jam out of a jar is perfectly fine. But if you do want to do the spell, I would recommend making your own jam. It really does add a lot more intent and purpose to the spell. Besides, that's where all of the energy is coming from here. So for the jam, you'll need four cups of berries. I also mixed in blueberries because I didn't quite have enough blackberries, so oops sorry one cup of sugar half a teaspoon of powdered ginger one teaspoon of cinnamon half a teaspoon of ground cloves one teaspoon of lemon juice and one teaspoon of lemon zest 
Then for the cookie, this is the same recipe as my floral shortbread cookies. I just love a butter cookie, so why not carry it over here? But anyways, you'll need one cup of butter at room temperature, one cup of powdered sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two cups of all-purpose flour, and one tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. Now to begin, let's make the jam. And remember, this is the main area of working within the spell. I begin simply by adding all of the ingredients to the pot and cooking them down. Once again, it's four cups of berries, one cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of ginger, one teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of ground cloves, one teaspoon of lemon juice, and one teaspoon of lemon zest. Then I turn on the heat and let them cook down. As the jam is cooking down, recite this incantation. By each stir of my spoon, I connect to that of the waxing moon. When it is full, blackberries grant me my boon. After reciting these words, spend some time meditating on your intent for this spell. Visualize what you desire and put that into your cooking. Now, I did get an interesting question on my last video of, from somebody who is not a native English speaker asking if they could change the words to their native tongue. Absolutely. Even people who are speaking English fluently and that's their main language, you are totally free to change up the words or say them in your head or not even say them at all. Really, these words are a guideline that I have for myself that I use, but if they don't work for you, then change it up or do something else. Spell work needs to be unique to you, and it needs to feel right flowing out of you. Personally, I really like when things rhyme. I think it's easy to remember, it makes it a little more exciting, and it just works for my spells. But it may not work for you, so mess around a little, see what feels right, and do what feels right. You can take my spells and alter them however you need for your own workings. It's important to just be true to yourself. All right, that was a long answer too. Yes, you can say this in your own language or change the words or not say them at all. Now back to the jam. When it comes to figuring out whether your jam has cooked down enough in order to fully set, it can sometimes be a little tricky. But I have some tricks. One trick if you're cooking them in a big pot is to run a spatula down the middle and if the line is slow to close, then it's done. Or if you're cooking in a smaller pot like I was, keep a plate in the refrigerator and when you think it's about done, pull the plate out, dump a tiny drop of jam onto it and run your finger through. If it doesn't go back or move around, if it stays congealed, then you're all done and it's perfect and ready to go. Now once I take my jam off the heat, I'll let it cool it down a bit and stick it in a mason jar and let it sit overnight. Then when it's the next day, I begin making my cookies. Now for the cookies, once again, I really just throw it all in a bowl and mix it all together. It's wildly simple. So once again, the ingredients here is that one cup of butter at room temperature, one cup of powdered sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, two cups of all-purpose flour, and one tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. Then once all your ingredients are in, just combine it all together. Once it's all come together, it's kind of becoming a mass clump thing. That's not what you really want to describe food as, but it's the best I got for you right now. Prepare a pan with parchment paper and take your dough and roll it into little balls. I don't really have a size guide for you, just what feels right. Then make as many as you can, lay them out all beautifully, and here comes the fun part. Pull that jam back out and start pressing your thumb into each cookie. This is why they're called thumbprint cookies. Once each cookie has a little thumbprint, take your jam and spoon a little bit of jam into each one. Usually I go kind of overboard. I went a little overboard. I really like jam. I think it's beautiful. So feel free to jam them up as much as you'd like. 
Then once that's all done, shove them in the oven at 350 for 18 to 20 minutes. Then take them out, let them cool, and enjoy. Now, if you're to do this with the spell, each time you eat one, say, I will have prosperity soon. Now, a few last notes. I would recommend performing this spell, and really any prosperity spell, during a waxing moon. This is because what you're working to manifest will grow alongside the moon. I would also recommend performing this spell on either a Thursday or a Friday, as Thursday is ruled by Jupiter and Friday Venus, and both encourage growth, abundance, and good luck. Really, this is a fun little kitchen witchery prosperity spell that I hope you guys enjoy. It's very wintry, and I know that, but I'm working with what I have here, and that's okay. That's what we all need to be doing right now. Staying indoors and staying safe and smart. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I promise to start working on more things that are not just kitchen witchery here soon. And as always, if you guys try this out, please tag me on Instagram or send me a DM. I would love to see your creations. Tell me how you've changed it or tweaked it or a way you're trying to do the spell differently. What new herbs you used, anything. I really, it's so exciting for me to see. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and I will see you soon. Bye.